I'm not on the property, I'm on a public sidewalk. I would like the free speech on a public sidewalk. He's the thing that's going to save you from the law of sin and death. Huh? Okay. He's the thing that's going to save you from the law of sin and death. Leave him today. God bless you. I tell you, he loves you today. It's a love story for God to love the world. Oh, I can. It's legal. Yeah, I got. I got the ordinance. I got. I got the sound ordinance right here, officer. Okay. The Bible says all we like. See um, it says right here within 80 decibels. So if you want to get a decibel meter, I'll be happy to turn it down. So Jesus described the last. Keep up the good work. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, sir. Hey, you going to be here for a little bit? Probably. Um, we did get one complaint on you, but yeah. as far as I'm concerned, we need more people like you doing this. So, yeah. yeah. Hi everybody, today uh, I'm talking to street preachers mainly and I wanted to talk to you about PA systems and using a PA system on the street and the legalities of it and which PA systems probably work the best and uh, we're going to go over some of this in some great detail so let's get started. Uh, for starters, I just want to say, obviously, there's no set way. <laughs> that, that, I mean, I mean, there's millions of ways, but I, I'm just showing you what I found has worked best for me. For start starters, works best for me to have some sort of a backpack that I just keep all of my street preaching stuff in. Now that said, I want to point out that I always keep in my van a backup plan because um, <laughs> like my uh, old pastor used to say, he said, I think uh, I think PA systems are all possessed of, of the devil <laughs> and they always seem to malfunction at the perfectly wrong time. And so uh, with that in mind, I always keep a backup and I'll show you that. Up in this cabinet here, I actually have two backups. This one is basic, basically what it looks like. Just, you know, a cheerleader's megaphone. And it's uh, no electricity to it at all. Sometimes you just want to be in an area and just uh, cast your voice somewhere. And I just uh, stuck to the... the the word Jesus and truth on here so uh, people know when you're they see some guy shouting through a megaphone like this they know what you're about <laughs> uh, my second backup which is my go-to if my first PA system doesn't work of course is a megaphone and this megaphone has served me well through the years and it was donated to me by another brother and um, uh, it has uh, served me quite well but um, <coughs> this is a 40 watt uh, megaphone and um, we'll get into the wattage and stuff of uh, PA systems in a minute but a rule of thumb is 40 watts and above it works the best out on the street. You want it to be at least 40 watts or, or more powerful. Um, if you buy anything less than 40 watts, you're probably you're probably not going to get heard very well. And so, um, yeah. And I put this strap on here. Set it up so that I can wear it over my shoulder and then the 
Um, I buy the kind with the microphone that comes loose. I don't like holding it up to my mouth. I, I prefer to have it down at my side and hold the mic up to my mouth so that it, it just uh, just has a different uh, air about it. And I think you can kind of figure out what I'm talking about. It doesn't feel like you are just shouting at people. And that's, that's what I want to always avoid when I'm using a PA system. I don't want it to just come across like I'm just shouting and shouting angry uh angrily <laughs> at the crowd so anyhow that's that and back to my backpack um i like the one with uh several compartments because i keep different things in this compartment here <coughs> i keep all my uh microphones and equipment electric equipment extra batteries for my microphone and then um, this is the uh, head mounted microphone that I wear most of the time that plugs into the PA and I also have a backup one of those and also in here is uh, an old this is an old cell phone that um, I keep charged up and it works awesome as an extra camera, you know, to get different angles. So while I'm out preaching and I, I always want to record if I can the, the incidents that happen because as you see in some of my intros, some uh, interesting things happen. I get punched or uh, um, get uh, the police come down on me unlawfully or, you know, cussed out or, you know, I just, I want to have a record mainly of what happens and also the Lord's been having me um, put all my uh, street preaching on YouTube because it that way it serves a double purpose not only are the people out on the street hearing the message but it's there for other people on youtube to watch and enjoy and and, and um, i've been heard reports from uh people that have watched my youtube channels and got saved and and god used me to through youtube to to reach the lost and and that's that's an amazing thing for me. Uh, when I was a young Christian, the Lord spoke to me in a prophecy and told me one day he would use me to preach on the world street corner. I didn't know what he meant, but it, I, I knew he, he meant that it, somehow my preaching would be heard around the world. And at the time, YouTube didn't exist. Uh, the, the Internet didn't exist. And, um, and now here... In uh, 2022, my preaching is heard around the world, fulfilling God's prophecy to me. Um, so inside this compartment, gospel tracks, all kinds of gospel tracks in here. Um, so I have this all set up. So all I got to do is grab it and go i keep my uh pa system fully charged and ready to go as soon as i get done preaching i take it in and charge it get it ready and this is uh what i use here um it's a um it's designed to strap around your waist and then um these other features I never use. The only thing I use is the, because uh, these were designed where you could like record a, a short message and it would play it over and over again. And I, um, I never could figure it out how to make it work. So I just, <laughs> I never needed it anyways. Um, your microphone, of course, plugs in there and then just the volume here. And um, this. PA, this is where you charge it, is a 
50 watt PA and as you hear on my videos it's really loud it, it I mean 50 watts is is more than enough um, I'm actually looking into in the future maybe getting one with a higher wattage uh, as the Lord allows so that's that also in here I keep my uh, my charging device so I can bring it bring my PA in and charge it and then I also have several different ways of mounting my cameras my uh, either my cell phone um, or my uh, backup cell phone this one uh, it works awesome it's got a magnet here I just put my backup cell phone in there and it you just uh, go out to any uh, light pole and it just donk, <laughs> sticks right to the light pole and you just aim it whatever direction you want and then uh, start your uh, camera and it starts recording. And in cases where there's nothing metal, I have this, uh, it's an elastic belt. It's you know typical man's belt but it's elastic it stretches and it's awesome for like say there's a tree nearby that i want to stick my cell phone onto i can wrap it around the tree cinch it down and then i just um take actually take this and i tuck it in behind the belt so that it's um held tightly against the tree and then i can adjust my uh adjust it to fit perfectly um to point whatever direction I am I mean and also finally have the word of God and I always when I'm out street preaching want to have the word of God handy if um somebody uh walks up has a question and I, um I don't know it off the top of my head I can go to the word of God and there it is and inside my Bible, besides carrying gospel tracts, got all kinds of gospel tracts in here, extra gospel tracts and stuff. Um, I carry this, and I also have this a copy of the United States Constitution. First Amendment guarantees us the right to freedom of speech and now we'll go over the legalities of street preaching so I think what uh, what we, we should first talk about before we get into any of the legalities of street preaching we should talk about what does the Bible say about it what does the Bible teach about street preaching um, obviously the Bible te teaches us that we are to obey the laws of the land and, and it makes that very clear it says you know that that God establishes the uh, rulers and people that are in authority and, and that they don't bear the sword or the gun <laughs> in today's modern society in vain they don't bear it in vain they're there to be peacekeepers they're there to uphold the law they're there to keep order in that society so as christians we are commanded to obey the laws of the land and this was an area that when i became a new christian and and first started street preaching i really really struggled with and and i didn't really understand how to balance this out because uh, as a new street preacher I was constantly being uh, thwarted by uh, law enforcement you know they would show up you're disturbing the peace you got to go you got to shut it down whatever and I would um, I thought I, I just I I had to obey the laws of the land and so I would just immediately pack up and quit preaching and it was 
it was kind of like <laughs> um, I was doing what you would call a drive-by street preaching for a while. I literally outfitted my van one time with a PA system that I could drive down the street and, and just preach as I drove by. Um, <clears throat> I would jump out on a street corner, start preaching. I'd say, I'll, I'll preach till they come tell me to leave. And, and I would be told to leave and I would go somewhere else and street preach. And it just felt like I was kind of on the edge there. <clears throat> I was kind of, uh, breaking the law and it just didn't set right with me and it's something I knew something wasn't right here that I needed to understand this more fully well yeah we're supposed to obey the laws of the land but there there is an exception to that and that exception is biblically according to the Bible when the laws of the land go radically against God's commands, God's orders, God's directives to us as believers. And I'll give you some examples. Um, the laws of the land at one time told the uh, all the people that they had to, at a certain time when they hear the music play, bow down to this false god. And it was literally this uh, giant image of the king that he had established. And he commanded everybody to bow down and worship this giant image of him when they heard the music play. Well, <laughs> the Bible records that there were three young men that refused to bow down. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the king found out they weren't bowing down. And he called him before him and he said we'll give you one more chance if you don't bow down we're going to throw you into the fiery furnace and we know the story of the music played they refused to bow and so they were taken and cast into a, a furnace of fire but right before they went they had something interesting to say they said be it known unto you this day we will not bow for anyone but our God and our God is well able to deliver us and they said but they said they'd made up their mind they said but even if he doesn't we're still not bowing we're not gonna bow down so I guess what I'm saying is in that in that situation we see yeah God commands us not to worship any false gods, not to worship any false images. And they were, they viewed God's commandments higher than man's. You see what I'm saying? There was another situation where they were uh, in another uh, a king had commanded that um, no one shall pray to any other God and it was found out this uh, gentleman was praying at a certain hour to his God the God of the Bible the God of uh, Abraham Isaac and Jake and of Jacob and he was uh, found out and the king said you know is this true that you are uh, going against the law that uh, you shall not work, you shall not pray to any other gods. And, and they found out, he found out that he was praying to the God of the Bible. And, and uh, this young, this uh, gentleman's name was Daniel. And we know the story he was thrown into the lion's den. And he spent the night there, but God stopped the mouth of the lions. And he was there all night. Completely unharmed. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been thrown in the fiery furnace. And the people that threw them in were consumed with fire, but they came out unharmed. <coughs> but the attitude was, even if God doesn't deliver me, I'm still, by faith, 
going to, in this instance, disobey the law, the law of the land. And um, after Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection, uh, the, the disciples started going out and proclaiming the God, glorious gospel of Jesus Christ to the uh, all the people they go in the marketplaces and and the uh, the city squares and and by the gates and they, they they proclaim this gospel message and they um it says that uh they were some of the disciples were were thrown in the prison and beaten for this and they were commanded strictly not to preach or teach in this name of Jesus anymore. The law. The law of the land. There was this law given. You shall not preach or teach in this name. They were let go. And they went out. And they were caught. Preaching again. In the name of Jesus. They disobeyed the law. Anyways. Regardless of what could happen to them. They were arrested and the, and the, um, the leaders, the, 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 the police and judges of their time, which were the scribes and Pharisees said, did we not strictly forbid you from preaching or teaching in this name? And Peter stood up <coughs> and he said, men of Israel judge this rather is right in the sight of God to obey God or obey men. You decide. And that, <laughs> that is, should be the heart of a street preacher. That should be the attitude of a street preacher. Should I obey God or should I obey men? Uh, Paul the Apostle, he was delivered up and thrown in prison. And um, some people, because I've had people ask me, well, if you get arrested, what good are you doing? If if you go against the law and, and get arrested, what good are you doing? And Paul answered that question himself. He said, he said, even by my imprisonment and my chains, he said, other brothers are waxing more bold because of my chains to go and proclaim the gospel. So, so when, um, when other brothers in Christ see you suffer like this for the sake of the gospel, they get emboldened. They get on fire. They go out and proclaim the gospel. God, if if, if uh, the devil takes you out, God will raise up ten more just like you in your spot, in, in that spot. And you can guarantee it. So, yeah, it does profit. <laughs> it does profit. Your chains... And your imprisonment does profit. And, and that's the attitude, I think, that we should have as believers. That it doesn't matter what the law of the land says. God said, God said this. Go, therefore, into all the world and proclaim this gospel to every creature. That's a command. That's a command from God. We are to go out... And proclaim this glorious gospel message. Regardless of what the law says. Now that in mind. We want to as best as we can. Try and work with the laws. Right? We don't want to just blatantly. I don't want to go. Uh, into the middle of a hospital. With sick people that are dying with a PA system and start preaching. <laughs> um, you don't want to go in the middle of a, uh, where there's a school next door to a school and start preaching or, you know, where, you know, people are asleep trying to sleep for the night. You don't want to go in a residential neighborhood and just start preaching at three o'clock in the morning, you know, and, and <clears throat> um, we want to work with the law the best that we can, but at the same time be obedient to Christ. You see what I'm saying? You follow me? So that said, um, talking about police officers. Now, you have to understand 
all police officers are not alike. As, as a matter of fact, there each one is is as unique and individual as every citizen is. They are completely um, unique. Everyone is different, and you don't know. You know, you see in my opening, you know. Uh, one police officer threatened to arrest me. Another one came up and, and shook my hand, told me I was doing a great job. He wished there was more of me, <laughs> you know. So, uh, just understand every police officer is different. The heart of every police officer is different. And you can't tell by looking. I mean, I've I've had some of the scariest looking police officers in the world come up to me and be the, the nicest a uh, police officer I've ever met. So, I guess what I'm saying when you're dealing with the police is you kind of want to, the the way you tell, G, and Jesus even said this, he said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And you kind of can tell what's in the heart of a police officer by the, what he says. And so you just, you have to wait and watch how he approaches you, how he approaches the situation, and how he deals with you before you respond. Don't just automatically hair up and say, you know, I, you, uh, you're the man, you're out here to shut me down, you know. <laughs> you don't want to just bristle up. And you want to try to work with the police as best as you can. Now, I carry a copy of the United States Constitution. And the reason I did is because I, I saw one police officer one time uh, <clears throat> when a street preacher said, you know, the, the Constitution guarantees me the right to freedom of speech. The police officer was like, well, you probably never even read the Constitution. <laughs> so I'm ready if he, if he says, yeah, as a matter of fact, that... I have a copy of it here. I can even recite to you the, the First Amendment. It says, Congress shall make no laws respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peacefully to assemble. Yada, 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 you know. So, um, so, um, I want, you want, uh, I just, uh, for me, I, I keep this uh, copy handy uh, to show the police officer if he has that attitude about it. I just, now, the thing I want you to understand is a lot of the time it's not worth your time or effort to argue with the police. That's not the time or the place. They think you're breaking the law. Let them do what they do. Don't do don't just, uh, I, I've seen street preachers just start shouting at the, at the cop and saying, you know, uh, uh, God's going to get you, God's going to strike you down here, blah, 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 blah. You know, no, it's, you don't want to defame, defame the name of Christ just by making a fool of yourself. Don't make a fool of yourself. Uh, Jesus was led quietly to the slaughter. And I think that's the example he wants us to follow. You know, most of the time when he was taken up before the judges and they accused him of this, accused him of that, he didn't even answer. He didn't even respond. He just remained completely silent. And they even got angry at his silence. And just, you know, answers down, nothing. You know, <laughs> they, they were mad because he wouldn't even defend himself. But there was a time a time where he did, where, you know, Pontius Pilate, he was like, don't you understand I had the power to release you or the power to execute you? And, and Jesus just looked at him and said, you'd have no power if it wasn't given to you from above. And so Jesus was recognizing and acknowledging to him where his power actually comes from. And... Um, I guess what I'm saying is when you're out on the street, um, it depends on the attitude of the police officer. If they seem reasonable, like um, they, they don't just flat out act a fool. If they act a fool, just go silent. 
that's that's my my own this is my own opinion and it's not etched in stone it's not uh you can do what you want and whatever the lord leads you there might be a time where god says no i want you to lift up your voice you know listen to god that's what uh, the the most important thing but as a rule it's not going to help you to argue the law with a police officer as a rule it just it will help you to know and understand the law and if you do get a reasonable police officer that's willing to look at the law with you, then you can share these things with them. And that's why I carry copies of it with me. So if they are reasonable, now if it's a security guard, it's a different thing. A security guard, um, their jurisdiction actually stops at the edge of private property. And when you're, if you... And I, I say this adamantly, if you always make sure that you're on public property, city streets and um, places like that are fair game, that any place that's a public, uh, considered public property, security guards have no jurisdiction. They might try and tell you they do or our property line goes clear of the curb well it doesn't matter because there's a, a thing called a um an easement <laughs> and the easement guarantees the right of a citizen to be able to walk on that public sidewalk freely and any public sidewalk that is available to the public to walk on whether it's privately owned or not, if it has an easement that allows the public to access it, they have the right to free speech in that area. Now, <clears throat> there's basically three ways, three main ways that a police officer will try and thwart you. Number one, they'll, they'll tell you they got a complaint. What that means is they think that their contact with you is a noise complaint. It's a simple noise complaint. Go out, talk to the subject making the noise, tell them to keep it down. And um, I showed you all these court cases, all these relevant courts. Supreme Court cases. Uh, the case uh, Say versus New York says that uh, not the Supreme Court ruled that not only does free speech guarantee us the right of free speech, it guarantees us the right to be loud enough to be heard, which includes use of a PA system. And so according to the law, According to the law of the United States of America, free speech cannot be classified as a noise disturbance. Noise disturbance is making noise without a purpose. Playing a stereo too loud it doesn't serve a purpose. Standing outside with a pot in one hand and a, um, a big giant spoon in the other, beating them together, clang, clang, clang. You're making noise without a purpose, right? Free speech doesn't fall under that classification. It's considered a totally different thing, and it doesn't. It, uh, noise disturbance cannot apply to free speech. It doesn't matter if they got a complaint. It doesn't matter if people around don't want to hear you, or if they think you're being too loud. You have the right to be loud enough to be heard, and to exercise free speech in the United States of America. So, a lot of these cities that have sound ordinances against using a PA system, they were originally designed for people that want to do entertainment outdoors and requiring them to get a specific permit for entertainment purposes, for making this for being loud outside 
Whereas free speech totally fits, and that's where people get confused. It fits under a completely different category. It doesn't fall under noise, the noise ordinance. The noise ordinance has nothing to do with it. <clears throat> that's why, you know, you know, it really gets me when I see a street preacher on YouTube. He's not even using a PA system. He's just using his voice. And the police officer comes out. We got a complaint. You're uh, making too much noise. You're shouting too loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's not breaking the law. He's It's free speech. It doesn't... Uh, noise complaints, noise ordinances do not apply to free speech. And, and that... The exception to that is time, place, and manner constraints, right? You, you can't just, uh, like I said, go out in the middle of the night. There's a time and a place. You can't go stand. If, if somebody's already uh, rallied together for a special rally and they're, um, they've uh, reserved this spot, for this time and place to do their thing, you know, you can't walk up in the middle of a concert that has a permit to be out um, in a public place at a certain time and date and walk up and stand on their stage and start preaching and take over the, the event. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? There's a time, place, and manner constraint. You don't want to go in the middle of the night, don't want to go in a noise sensitive zone and um and that's where it's there's a lot of discernment that that you have to use now i'm, I'm not saying there, there could be a situation where god says <laughs> gotta be in here <clears throat> there could be a situation where god says no i want you to go interrupt this concert you better obey God. God's going to move. God's going to do something. But in under normal circumstances, we want to try to work with the law as best as we can, but we still have to be obedient to God. And that's the number one thing, is be obedient to God. If you can hear God and God says, God says, number one thing is you want to be obedient to God. If God says, do something, do it. No matter how weird it is. Because uh, the Bible's full of, of people that God asked them to do weird things. And they did it. And God used it. So, you want to be open to God and his weirdness. <laughs> so. So, uh, the number one way that the uh, police will try to come at you is noise disturbance. The number two way they will try to come at you is um, they will say that you're loitering. They will try to say, well, you, you're not allowed to loiter here. Well, loitering is defined as hanging around in one spot with no purpose, no reason. If you're exercising free speech, obviously you have a reason. Obviously you have a, a purpose. And they will say that uh, you have to have a special permit to, to have a gathering here. No, you don't. You're, you're exercising free speech. You don't have to have a special permit. The Constitution guarantees you the right to peacefully assemble in a public place. And you don't have to have a permit. They might try to say, well, you're you're blocking pedestrian traffic. No, I'm not. I'm standing here exercising free speech. That's what I have the right to do. It's not blocking anything. It's not loitering. It's free speech. And finally, the big one that they will try to use against you, of course, is city ordinance against use of a PA system. You're not allowed to use a PA system while you're out here doing this. Well, again, I already uh, pointed out that the uh, Constitution 
guarantees you the right to free speech, which the Supreme Court has already ruled also includes the right to be loud enough to be heard. Now, um, we live in a society today, and this is where a lot of a lot of people will come up, just not not even police officers, just people will come up and say, why you got to be shouting through a PA system? Why can't you just talk to people normal? Well, we don't live, and they'll, and they'll try to quote the Bible to you. Jesus didn't use a PA system. Well, Jesus never had a motorcycle st- set next to him while he was trying to speak on the Mount of Olives and rev his engine. Jesus never had some punk pull up beside him in in his uh, Corvette and ramp up his stereo as loud as he could, right? <laughs> that never happened to Jesus. We live in a different time. We live in a different uh, form of society. <coughs> but the the Constitution guarantees us the right to be heard while we are speaking and and preaching and exercising free speech. Um, that said, it is a good idea, and this is what I did, is I got, went online, I got a copy of the Kansas City Noise Ordinance, the city that I live in. I've also checked out uh, some of their surrounding cities to see what their laws are. But um, I wanted to see what their their noise ordinance said. I printed it off and I highlighted the specific areas that would relate to what I'm talking about. And, and so, you know, like this uh, defines, uh, it talks about... Um, free speech using a, a public address system in a uh, commercial uh, zone. And then right here, it talks about what a commercial, uh, where, a, where it's zoned commercial property. Um, if it's zoned commercial property, that means PA system is allowed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you're allowed to be as loud as 80 decibels. And in Kansas City law, it also says if the ambient noise happens to be louder than 80 decibels, you're allowed to be 5 decibels above it. So Kansas City is pretty good about their noise ordinance. Now there are special entertainment areas which are still classified as commercial like uh, um, Westport and the Plaza. And um, the Westport sound ordinance... Uh, section 50-8 says that we are allowed to use a PA system um, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. So, and I always try to abide by that. And then um, legally, I could get away with preaching longer than 11 p.m. because it's free speech. But as I said, I try to work with law enforcement and so i shut it down at 11 p.m on the dot if i'm ever out at westport and that is has actually gained me <coughs> respect of the security and police officers that work down there and they actually um you'll see them on a lot of my videos step up and defend me and protect me against uh citizens that come against me try to attack me but um as i said a lot of times, if if the police officer, you can just tell by their attitude, they're not going to listen. It doesn't help to try to tell somebody his job. You don't want somebody coming to where you work and telling you you're doing it wrong, <laughs> right? And, and it's going to really tick off a police officer when he comes on the scene and say, says you're breaking the law and you need to go. Um just respectfully officer i know i'm not breaking the law i'm not leaving um you you can do what you have to do i'm gonna do what i'm called to do and if he's reasonable and we'll, we'll talk to you about it you can break this stuff out and show it to him say this is what the law says but if, if you can tell he's not going to be reasonable that you know you, you kind of want to let him 
ask you, well, what does the law say? How do you, you know, why do you think that? Then, you know, he's open to you showing it and you can pull it out and say, well, this is what the Kansas City noise ordinance actually says. But as you see, like in my opening, that one police officer pulled up, you're not allowed to have a PA system out here without a, a permit. I said, uh, yes, sir, officer, I am. I'm not breaking the law. I, know, I have the sound ordinance right here. I know that I'm, um, it's legal to do what I'm doing. And he threatened to arrest me. And, um, and this happens a lot. <clears throat> Police officers will just try to intimidate you to make you leave. And, and if their intimidation doesn't work, they'll tell you, well, I'll be back in 20 minutes. If you're still here, you're going to jail. And then you say, okay, officer, have a good night. <laughs> that means they're leaving. That means they're done. Because most of the time when they tell you that, that's their, that's their um, way to bow out gracefully and not lose face. And then that's what they're trying to do is, you know, they're the man of authority. They don't want to come across like, well, I lost this battle. So they'll, 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 they'll threaten you to arrest you when they come back and they never come back. <laughs> you just keep preaching. <clears throat> but if they do... And you know the law is behind you. Just like Jesus. Be like Jesus. Just be like the lamb led to the slaughter. Just be quiet. Let them put you in handcuffs and take you away. And uh, you can bail out and fight it in court. And the court, I guarantee you, any good lawyer will just uh, get it tossed out. And, and somebody said, well, what, is, what good does it do to go to jail? You didn't get the gospel preached. Again, <laughs> uh, you had other brothers become more emboldened to preach the gospel because of your chains. You follow me? And then you'll have people walk up just out of the blue. Well, you know, <clears throat> where does it say in the Bible that you should be a street, that you should do this uh out on the street shouldn't you be in a church somewhere i get that all the time and so i actually got this list here i'll put it up on the screen for you of all the people in the bible that were street preachers that proclaimed the gospel on the street and you can see there's there was a lot of them so i hope this video was helpful to you uh, comment to me if it was in the comments and I hope that you, and pray that you have a, a blessed day in Jesus. And, and let's just pray. Father, I just pray on my brothers and sisters that you're touching to go out and proclaim this gospel. I pray, God, that you would just deliver them out of the hands of evil and wicked men. That you would put heads of protection around them. That you would keep them safe. Camp angels around them. Protect them from physical harm. And let them be bold in you and proclaim your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. God bless you.